All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna be talking about how to create a security camera on your Raspberry Pi with just a camera and Motion iOS. It's got a great setup because you can even use motion detecting to choose when to record videos and even use notifications. It's a great setup because not only can it use just about any USB camera, but it can also use the awesome high quality camera from Raspberry Pi to use the security camera and just give you really good quality video and you can even choose options such as record only when there's motion and things like that. So it's very intelligent and a very small, honestly really inexpensive package. All right, so first, let's talk about what you're gonna need for this setup. Well, first off, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna be doing this on the Raspberry Pi 4 where that CPU is really gonna help us out because encoding and decoding video streams is a big burden on a CPU. Then you're also gonna need some kind of camera. I'm gonna be using the Raspberry Pi high quality camera right here, and it is phenomenal with the ultra wide lens. Then you're also gonna need the usual power supply and either a micro SD card or a USB drive. I'm gonna be doing this on a micro SD card to keep the package small. And I'll go ahead and leave links to all of these things in the description below. Motion iOS is actually a really great, really easy to use security camera system that you can kind of piece together with whatever parts you want. You can actually even hook up multiple USB cameras to this and get multiple video streams out of it, all from one single computer. You can also daisy chain them by having essentially a bunch of remote Motion iOS cameras and then a centralized one as your true server. That way you can view all the video streams on a single server and keep everything there. It also offers the ability to easily create a FTP or Samba server, meaning accessing the video files is just incredibly easy. All you have to do is connect to it natively through Mac or Windows through the SMB share and you're able to access all the video clips. It's got really good recording options, viewing options, and it even allows you to delete old versions based off of a time history. There is also the option to take photos and only record when motion is detected. For what it is, it's a really nice, really easy to use system. You can even set it up to automatically back up to Google Drive, though this will probably slow down your bandwidth some. Overall, I was really impressed by Motion OS, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the Motion iOS, and that's EYOS instead of iOS, wiki page on GitHub. So basically this goes over the basics of what Motion iOS is, and it's honestly not the best documentation, but overall the user interface is really easy to use, so who's complaining them? And from here, all we gotta do is go down to supported devices, and we're going to scroll down until we find the operating system you want. So I'm gonna be installing this on a Pi 4, so I'm gonna choose that. I would choose the latest version. I've already got this downloaded, so I'm not gonna make them download it again, but that's where you download it from, and just download it. Then from there, you're gonna need some way to attach either your micro SD card or your SSD to your computer. That way we can overwrite them and create it as the boot media. I'm gonna be using this micro SD card and I've just got a USB-C adapter for it. It's overall pretty easy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and load it on my computer. All right, so now I've plugged in that SD card into my computer and I've also put my Ocean iOS file into my desktop so you can just see easily. And this is what was downloaded and this is that micro SD card that we put in. So now all we have to do is go ahead and load it up. We're going to use the Raspberry Pi imager and it makes this incredibly easy. It's also an ultra lightweight operating system, which is great. So for operating system, all you select is use custom and it can take this compressed file right here and just click open. And then for choose SD card, choose your SD card and just click write. It's gonna overwrite everything on that card. All right, and it is already done. It's taking maybe like 30 seconds to both write and verify it, which is so much faster than even Raspberry Pi OS Lite ever was. It's so quick. All right, and so now it says we're good and we can go ahead and eject it from our computer. There is one thing to note. There are some special configs you need to do if you're going to be hooking up over Wi-Fi because it's obviously not gonna be able to access your network until you've given it the Wi-Fi password. So there is a config file and it's well documented, but just Google how to set up Wi-Fi on open iOS. But I'll leave a link to how to do it in the description below. So for me, I'm using a wired ethernet connection, so I don't need to do it. So I can actually just go ahead and plug this out of my computer and plug it directly into my Raspberry Pi. And I'm gonna attach the camera module, an ethernet cable, and power. And let's go ahead and get started. 
All right, so now I've just gone through and hooked everything up and powered it on. So now I should be able to go to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi on my browser and be able to get to the Motion iOS webpage. So I already know what the IP address of this is because it's set up statically on my network, but you may have to go into your router and see what IP address you've connected. There are a few different ways to do it, but whichever one you like to do best. I don't think it sets up a host name default, unfortunately. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to 10.0.0.22, which is the IP address given to my Raspberry Pi every time. All right, and just like that, we've gotten the login page. The default out of the box is admin and no password. And so we're already up and running. It should load right here. Yep, it's just loaded the security camera right here. So as you can see, this is the very, very, very low quality version. So I'm gonna get it a little bit higher, but this is me right here. Right now, we're already in Motion iOS, and it just de detected the Raspberry Pi camera just like that and set it up for us automatically. So now let's go ahead and start configuring some things. So to do that, we're going to go into this button right here, and we've got a bunch of options. We've got the layout columns, so that's basically how many columns wide the video is, and layout rows. I've only got one camera, so I'm just doing one and one. And so now I would recommend giving an admin password just to be safe on there. I'm not gonna do it now, but it's not a bad idea to do it. And we'll give it a host name. We'll call it PyCam. And so as you can see right there, the host name is now PyCam. So it gives us which camera we are on, which is nice. Though I was unable to get to PyCam.local, unfortunately. That might be something I need to figure out how to do. So now let's go into some other settings. So network, you can choose to do DHCP or a static IP address. I'd recommend setting up a static IP address if you're gonna be doing this. Either set it up here, or the better way to do it would be to set it up on your router and give it a static IP address via the router. That way, if anything changes, DHCP still works and you're less likely to have a connection issue. You can also set up a wireless network here. All right, so services is one of the great parts. Default out of the box, it has a FTP server and a Samba server just built in. That means that you can access all the files off the camera via FTP or SMB. It's so easy to use. It just works right out of the box. And I'll show you how to do that after we get some video recorded to it. I'm gonna turn off FTP, cause I don't need FTP. And then there's expert settings, which are, well, out of what I need. So now we go down to video devices. We see this first Raspberry Pi camera is camera one. I'll call it high quality camera. And it's already got everything set up here. I'll even set up automatic brightness. And so now we can actually change the video resolution all the way up to 1080. And so now I'm gonna hit apply and we're going to see a quick dropout. But once it comes back, we're going to look so much better. But yeah, so as you can see, it looks so much better in 1080p. You can also go through and change the frame rate and these are things I'd recommend doing, just kind of figuring out what kind of frame rate your Pi can handle. And if you start getting dropouts, maybe lower the frame rate or the video quality or things like that to make sure that your Pi can process everything. But the high quality camera and the Raspberry Pi 4 is very reactive at 10 frames per second and 1080, which honestly for a security camera, you really probably don't need more than 10 frames per second as the bigger it is, the larger files you're gonna to have to have and honestly, you're looking for identification, see what happened, and you can do that in very few frames. Then for file storage, we've got a bunch of different options here where you can do uploading media files, which is awesome. You can either do a standard FTP server or even Google Drive, Google Photo, or Dropbox. It's really nice to be able to do this. And another thing you can do is basically set up a NAS as an FTP server and have all your cameras dumping to it that way, if one of the cameras dies or gets stolen or something, you've got backups of the footage. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off though. And then you can also do web hooks and things like that. So it's very customizable. For text overlay, as you can see right here, maybe, it's tiny because it's scaled based off of the very low definition one. So we're going to go into text overlay and we're going to make it bigger. And see, so you can see high quality camera, and the time, which is really nice to have. 
So video streaming actually allows you to use this as a security camera for something like Synology Security Station. You just pass it in as an IP camera, but for now we're going to disable that because it uses bandwidth that we don't need to be using. I would recommend disabling any services you're not planning on using because they are all taking up extra CPU. And so if you limit them, then you don't need as many things. Actually, the text overlay will add some and you could probably get a few more frames per second if you had it disabled. So now we've got still images, which are very straightforward. Basically, you can choose how often to save them and when to save them. So you can say, okay, every time there's motion, take one picture, which is a great setup. And you can say when to keep them. We can say keep them for a week. And it will be very small. You can choose all of these things to customize and even choose the quality. The quality is really important because if you lower the quality a little bit, you can get files that are like 10 times as small, meaning you can store 10 times as many, which is what's really important about security stuff. That's why it's not a bad idea to slap an extra hard drive on here and choose where these things are written to because that way you can store them for so much longer. Now we're gonna go into movies. This is where the good stuff is. I'm going to set up continuous recording and we can set up a few different things. I like the MP4 container and we're going to drop the quality down to maybe 50% just because we probably don't need it. And we'll say the maximum movie length. I would do probably 120 seconds. That's two minutes. So every two minutes it creates a new file. It's a bit of a pain to go through, but it means that you've got separate files for all these things. So if there's a weird corruption or a file gets lost, you can see stuff a lot quicker. And so that's what I do. And especially if you're doing continuous recording, choose how long to keep them. So that's gonna be for one week. And I'll just go ahead and click apply. So now is motion detection. There's detection thresholds and things like that. And that's where you can really kind of set it. And it takes a little bit of messing around with to really get it going, but you can do this all remotely. So once you get your camera set up, I would toggle every single one of these individually to really figure out how to get it to work the best. You can even choose something like a mask and say, hey, I want these parts of the image not to be added. But that's honestly for tinkering and figuring out how to work it best and I'm actually gonna disable motion for now. All right, so now that these videos have been recording, let's go through and actually be able to access them on our computer. So I'm just gonna go in and go into Finder and I'm going to hit Command K. And then I'm gonna type SMB colon slash slash the IP address of that camera and click connect. Now we're going to say the password and that is admin. And then the password, if you added it, I did not and just click connect. And this is how easy it is. It gives you the ability to just connect to it and click OK. And now we got, OK, camera one, the, today's date. It'll load them all in there. And these are all the images that were being taken because motion was being detected. And then we can also go down and find video files. Right now, this video file is being written. So we're gonna to have to wait a minute because I've got that total of two minutes. Okay, I'm gonna disable the continuous um, images. All right, and so now if we go to the bottom because I sorted by uh, type, we can see the movies. And just like that, we have a recorded video and it's the frame that we, rate that we set up and everything. Honestly, with a high quality camera, it's outputting a really clean video for a security camera. It's not perfect, but overall it's definitely usable and it's a great thing to have. Note, you probably wanna go through and do the calculation for how much storage you need based off of how big these files are and make sure you get that figured out because video files just store up hard drives. That's why it's a good idea to buy an external hard drive for this if you're really gonna be using it or have a service where everything's saved to like an FTP server that could be a separate Raspberry Pi for five or six IP cameras. You can do a lot of customization here and really figure out exactly what you need. But yeah, these are high quality videos for what they are and you can see everything you need. All right, and so that's it. This is a really easy way to set up a security camera with a Raspberry Pi and you can throw about just any USB camera at it. 
and you can have your own security camera for dirt cheap. Plus, you can set up so it only records when motion is detected, which is a huge benefit because that way you're not wasting gigabytes and gigabytes of storage, just recording, nothing moving. Well, that's all I've got for you. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.